Hi, you guys. Okay, Bridgerton Season 2, Episode 2, Off to the Races. Lady Whistledown writes, Dearest Rita, if what this offer hears is true, then a great challenge concerning this season's diamond has been set forth indeed. Any suitor wishing to gain an audience with Miss Edwina Sharman must first tame the prickly spinster of a beast otherwise known as her sister. Of course, the only competition that compels my attention is the game of courtship. Best of luck to this year's players. Try not to stumble on the starting line. Edwina is getting ready for her prospects and Kate made a list of possible suitors. Lady Danbury noticed that Lord Bridgerton is off the list. Kate said Lord Bridgerton is giving fake. He said that he only wants a wife to fulfill his duties, not for love. Lady Danbury is like, okay, most marriages of the tongue are business arrangements. True love matches are rare. Kate, she advises her sister to continue to find her love match, what she desires. Lord Bridgerton, he's focused on finding a wife to continue his family legacy. Edwina is the lady that aligns with um, his checklist, but it's her thorny sister, Kate, that's the pain. But he's ready for the challenge. I'm noticing that's what Anthony likes, a challenge. At Lady Danbury's, Edwina has suitors wrapped around the corner, grown, and they're growing impatient. Kate is like, calm down, wait your turn. Now, Anthony tries to get the VIP treatment going straight to Kate, and he tries to arrange a date to the races later on that afternoon. Kate says no, so Anthony tries the day after that. Kate tells him, check back in December, and hopefully she won't be married. Kate is like, why are you here after all the things that I heard the other night? Not only that, I've been reading what Lady Whistledown wrote. And basically, what she wrote about Anthony is true. So, she's like, goodbye. Get from out of my face. Penelope and Eloise are discussing Lady Whistledown latest piece. The part when Lady Dis- Whistledown wrote about um, how naming a diamond is ridiculous and that they should be focused on praising women for their true accomplishments. Well, Eloise feels like if she could only speak to Lady Whistledown, she can encourage her to write more on women's rights. Penelope is like, pump your brakes. I don't think she wants to change her style of writing. Perhaps she's content. And if she, she has you interested again, whatever she's doing is working. It's like, you ever had a friend um, and you bring up a topic in pop culture and they act like down and indulge in celebrity gossip or anything like that. But when you get to talking, they may throw their opinion in or uh, add to the piece. And you be like, girl, I thought you said you don't watch. It's something like that. And... Don't get me wrong. Gossip is just what it is. Gossip. But we all indulge. Mm-hmm. Well, Eloise is convinced that if she can only just find Lady Whistle down, she can try to convince her to do more. Lady Bridgerton said, what you need to find is happiness. Tell her Penelope she can find happiness in a mate. And Penelope said, I believe that she could. Just not with Lady Whistle down. Someone like Colin. And... Eloise is like Colin. She's like, no, Colin is back. Colin has returned from his expedition. Penelope is so in love with Colin. (laughs) Everyone welcomes him back. Anthony tells the gang to ready themselves to go off to the races as a family. I guess he's trying to hunt down Miss Edwina and and try to impress her. Okay, at the races, Montrick. He has retired from boxing. Remember, he scammed his way into high society, a scheme put together by Lord Feverton to come at the people with the bullshit. And that scheme got Lord Feverton killed. Well, he's opened up a gentleman's club and he's down there trying to invite all the gentlemen to his grand opening. Lady Bridgerton is nagging the fuck out of Eloise about the importance of finding a suitor. Eloise is painted dust and she's looking at this pa- these stack of pamphlets. Something about the pamphlets has Eloise interested. So she takes the pamphlet and she walks off. Penelope, she's over there 
and she purposely runs into Colin. She's making conversation about whether or not Colin was lonely on his trip. And as soon as Penelope said, you met someone, here comes Eloise. Eloise is like, Pen, I found you. <laughs> Penelope said, you always do, girl. Eloise noticed that the pamphlet she has is a match to it. Lady Whistledown. Texture, weight, same quality. Penelope brushed it off as paper is paper, leaving Eloise feeling like she's tripping. But Eloise listened to her gut and she made note of the printer's label. Miss Edwina is being escorted by Lord Lumley, the one Kate is so fond of. Well, Mr. Thomas Dorset, I think that was his name, he would like to escort around Kate. Kate, she didn't oblige and she was nice about it. So they went to the side and chit chat. Kate spots Anthony. This child is always looking for Anthony, isn't she? Anyways, the foursome finds their seats. And that's Kate and uh, Mr. Thomas, Edwina and Lord Lumley. And motherfucking Anthony comes around. Lumley, he seems excited by Anthony's presence. Anthony being popular and all, that doesn't surprise me that Lumley is a fan. Lumley said his mama is pressed to be invited for tea again at the Bridgertons. Anthony said, well, I'm going to have to set that up. And he throws in there, yeah, I know the, the I see that ladies don't have anything to drink. I mean, it's hot out here. A gentleman will make sure. And here's Lumley. I'll go get lemonade. He's a damn simp. Anthony slid his ass right in, in his seat. And Kate is so aggy right now. Edwina is cheeky. She wants Anthony to charm her. <laughs> Kate and Anthony gets into this debate over which horse will win. It gets so heated it makes Edwina and Mr. Thomas uncomfortable. They are like, cool down girl, cool down. A few rows back, Lady Bridgerton noticed that Edwina and Anthony has Anthony's attention. Lady Danbury tells Lady Bridgerton, yes, but the obstacle is Edwina wants a love match and the vow count does not. So these matchmakers, again, is going to try to persuade Edwina and Anthony to marry. Lumley returns and Anthony does not move. <laughs> And he takes a glass of lemonade for himself. Okay, the races has begun. Kate has her horse that she betted on. And Anthony, the same with him. And this is a bet between them two. Both of them are rooting for their horse. And they both are doing the most. Kate horse wins and she rubs it in. When Mr. Thomas asks Kate, well, why do you jab, why do you jab at the vow count so much? He's a sore loser. He's been that way since Oxford. Kate said, hold up, excuse me, what? You knew him from where? Kate is done. She don't want to hear nothing else from Mr. Thomas, who he swears by that he really genuinely wants to get to know Kate, but she don't want to hear any of this shit. She done grabbed up, up. Edwina calls Anthony out for trying to distract her and she tells Anthony to never speak to Edwina or her ever again and she leaves. Why does Kate always have to leave and grab up Edwina when she gets pissed the fuck off if she's there for Edwina? I'll tell you why because it's all about Kate. Mm-hmm. Eloise take her ass down to the printer shop and she is demanding to know information about Lady Whistledown. She tells the worker, I know that she get her work printed here. She tells her, look, I don't know what you're talking about. Perhaps you may go get your trivial gossip elsewhere. He asks Eloise, so what you want, private information about the season's eligible bachelor? Eloise tells him, no, you got that wrong. I'm the wrong girl for that. I'm hoping to find a writer so we can maybe discuss more intellectual matters, the rights of women. So he passes Eloise a pamphlet, Appeal in Defense of Women Rights. If it's women rights that you're after, this is for you. New thoughts, unsettling ideas. I hope it's not too unsettling for you. Okay. <laughs> Miss Eloise may have found her a man that understands her, but he's not of high society. Hmm. I'm thinking this is going to go somewhere. The new Lord Featherington is getting real comfortable. Placing his gun collection in a family space, fucking up Lady Featherington home decor. 
Philippa is married now. Yes, to Mr. Finch. His mama had to double check with her husband to see if the dowry was in fact paid. Told y'all they gonna need that money. Lady Featherington is trying to get closer to the new Lord Featherington. She can't rest assured without being a step ahead of the head of household. And to be fair, she had to be this way for years, being with her ex husband well late husband who is always well was always frivolous with his money lady featherington is the type that she will not lose she offers to be a guide for lord featherington to navigate through the town because he's new to town and everything one who can show him how the society works and lord featherington said you're correct that's why i'm planning on to find her very soon <laughs> Miss Varley tells them that their new in-laws is waiting for them and Lord Featherington charms Mrs. Varley on the way out making her blush. So Lady Featherington say yeah that smile was all good and everything right now but that'll be the last thing we see once he brings some new bitch up in here and get me the hell out. I don't blame her. They say never trust a big butt and a smile. Well in this case don't trust the smile. Lady Danbury, Edwina, and Kate was invited to see the queen. So while waiting for the queen, Edwina and her sister is debating about Anthony. Edwina says to Kate, Appa always said it takes a, a courageous man to go after what he truly want. Kate said, Appa also said a, a true gentleman is always honest. The queen has her own agenda, telling Edwina to be aware of gossip mongers. And people who will try to break up the, her protective circle. They will come along, Queen Charlotte says. You just let me know who they are so I can see if they are all truthful. Lady Danbury pulls the queen to the side and tells her that she see what she's doing. She calls her out. Says to the queen, Lady Whistledown will connect you with Edwina. Your diamond, then Edwina will bring Lady Whistledown to the queen to unmask. Is that why you chose her? So the queen is like, was I, was it so obvious? She did so because Edwina is experienced and innocent to this lifestyle. So in her mind, it makes Edwina trustworthy. Okay, Benedict, Anthony, and Colin are out fencing. And Anthony is on one. He's like, she's arrogant. She's so, so sure she knows best in every situation. And Benedict said, right, because you know best in every situation. Anthony is a sore loser and it's confirmed when Benedict reminds him that, Anthony, you're always a winner because when you lose, when he loses, Anthony is always claiming that someone cheated. Like I mentioned, Anthony likes a challenge. In this game here, it symbolizes Anthony's mentality. He is determined to always be a winner. Anthony is given reasons to why Edwina would be a good wife. Benedict tells him, or is it that you dismiss every other lady in town? Or is Anthony attracted to the challenge? It is confirmed to me when Colin asks him, why do he even bother with this girl and her meddlesome sister? And Anthony doesn't have to even worry about it. Anthony quickly answered, why should he be the one to admit defeat? See, it's a challenge for him. Edwina isn't so easy accessible and no one tells Anthony he can't have what he wants. So it's a challenge. Anthony said he refuses to let some sister who is younger than him keeps him from getting what he wants. Benedict said, you mean who you want? Exactly. At this point, Anthony isn't even looking at Edwina as a human, just a dominantly prize that he is determined to win. Later that day, Anthony brought Edwina a horse. Kate comes out of there. She said, take your Trojan horse elsewhere. Chow, I died laughing. That was so funny to me. Kate tells him she doesn't have time for games today. He did enough games with Mr. Thomas the day before. Anthony tells her to chill. You don't even know me like that. I'm not a villain. All the ladies want me. He goes on to tell Kate, look, you made it clear about what you want, but this isn't about you. It's about your sister, Edwina. Edwina then comes out and she's overwhelmed by Anthony's gift. And Anthony was like, didn't you say you love horses? 
Well, actually, Edwina said, I lo- that, ho- that story about the horse was from a novel. Why did Anthony mistake this? Because Anthony is halfway interested in Edwina. Anthony had to take that L. <laughs> he felt stupid. But Edwina was grateful about it and she was nice about it. Later that evening, Lady Bridgerton, Eloise, and Colin was on their way to Lady Danbury for a suave. Anthony said, I didn't get an invite. Lady Bridgerton tells him, well, what did you expect? Kate is only looking out for her sister who wants a love match that you can give her. You choose not to give her. He tells him perhaps the other suitors are careful with their words tonight at the poetry reading. And all Anthony heard about his other suitors. Child Anthony heard heard poetry. He goes down to Benedict. Anthony tells, asks him, you need to teach me how to read poetry. And Benedict explains to Anthony, you can't just repeat poetry. Tells him poetry is the art of revealing precious truth into words. Anthony, he doesn't get it. So Benedict says to him, what is what is it to truly admire a woman to look at her and feel inspiration to delight in her beauty so much so that you all your defenses crumble that you are willing to take on any pain or any burden for her to honor her being with deeds and words and this was beautifully said because it came from the heart and Anthony tells Benedict you need to apply yourself more and write that down Lady Br- Lady Danbury is hosting a soiree. This time, the men is the one who have to work for the woman's attention. It started out just being a poetry reading, and then the guy suggested to do a little talent portion. Penelope and Colin got back to their last conversation about whom may have been keeping Colin company abroad. Well, that person was himself. He thanked Penelope for her kind words and letters in her letters that helped him find himself at the marina. He says that he's sworn off woman for in the meantime. So Penelope was like, huh? I'm a woman? Colin said, no, you're Penelope, my friend. Oh, he friend zoned her. And that's sad for Penelope. Penelope backs herself into a corner. This is why you don't have your man, Penelope. Stop being a wallflower. Show these bitches who you are. Miss Cowper received a beautiful necklace necklace from Lord Featherington. So Lady Cowper, she and her daughter, they wants to know what's up with that. Lady Featherington said, oh, that ain't about shit. Lord Featherington is always so generous with gift giving. She tells them it's so hard to keep up. Lady Cowper is thinking, yeah, right, bitch. We're going to see for ourselves. It's the second half of the poetry talent show. And they were wrapping up and here comes Anthony with no Im- invitation. Of course, Kate is trying to hear her mouth, see what he got to say. I got something to say. That's what Anthony said. Anthony, he gets up there and he regurgitated exactly what Benedict said earlier. So he's up there repeating it and he looks over at Kate and he feels convicted. He balls the piece of paper up and he throws it into the fire. He apologizes and come clean. Anthony said, these are someone else's words. I'm not the man. I'm not a man of poetry. Words of flattery are sweet, but hollow if there's no action. He says to Edwina, if I tell you... I want the same that thing that you want. I'll be lying. But rest assured, when it comes to action and duty, I don't lack. And I hope that can speak louder than any words. My thing is when Anthony, he looked over to Kate, that's when he felt conviction because she is the one who challenged him. And sometimes a challenge can make us do better, like the right he did the right thing and came out and spoke from his heart truly instead of the piece of what was on that piece of paper. Mm-hmm. His girl was Kate. Because Anthony is winning Kate Edwina over, Kate's get frustrated and she storms off in a rudely manner to the the guests everybody there picked up her vibe so lady danbury she storms off lady danbury tries to go back and encourage kate to return to the soiree kate is determined to get edwina to see that anthony just ain't it sis lady danbury says to kate you need to focus on yourself trying to get your sister to see your way will only leave you irritated 
and make you appear to be the angry one. Lady Danbury continues to try to get Kate to focus on her life. She is only 26 and swearing off love is ridiculous. Kate tries to compare her contentment to Lady Danbury. Lady Danbury, she says, excuse me, I have lived. I'm a woman. I have loved. I lost. And I earned my right to do and say whatever I choose. We are not the same. Keep acting in this manner and you'll never be me. Lady Danbury is correct. Stop making lifetime decisions based off temporary feelings, Kate. You're only 26. Kate puts her poker face on and returns back to the suave. Soiree. I'm sorry. Rest assured, she finds a way to make eye contact with Anthony. Kate for sure likes a challenge as well. But also it seems like she's bitter about a lot of things. Maybe it's because of the role she had to take when her oppa passed. She definitely gives old maid at the age of 26. You know, Eloise is still investigating Lady Whistledown. She confesses to Penelope that she visited the print shop. And from the pamphlet that she received from the guy down there and Lady Whistledown pamphlets, they are the exact same. Plus, the letter K font is misshaped in the exact same, both prints, the exact same way. This makes Penelope nervous. She go on down to the marketplace in regular society and brought a, them a new letter K for the printer. So Penelope is leaving out the marketplace and she runs into Madame Delacroix. Madame Delacroix was like, Miss Penelope, hey. Penelope took off like she stole something. <laughs> and the queen, she's investigating all the ladies that came in contact with Edwina at the soiree the night before. And lastly, Lady Whistledown writes, What secrets is the season's diamond holding near and dear to her heart? Who does she share them with? Valcam Bridgerton, perhaps? At least Kate Sharma's opinion is no secret at all. You might call this author the biggest secret sharer of all. Who else would keep us, you all honest? All secrets must come to light. And that's where the episode ends. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching. Tell a friend. Subscribe. Bye.